And then I said, Simon Levive. And they said, well, that's yeah, one of many names that she, he's been using. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're recounting the untold story of the Tinder swindler. It's almost like the perfect scam. For this deep dive, we're looking at the details behind and beyond the iconic Netflix documentary investigating dating app fraudster Simon Leviev. What do you think of the Tinder swindler and his victims? Are there any other details we missed? Let us know in the comments. Simon Leviev's Origins To quickly recap, Simon Leviev, otherwise known as the Tinder swindler, was the subject of a 2022 Netflix documentary that detailed his dating scams. This is someone who is well-traveled and still works very hard. So I thought, oh, great, let's swipe uh, right on that. He would take advantage of women by luring them in with lavish luxury, only to steal money from them to fund his lifestyle. But Simon didn't begin with this elaborate deception. He wants me to come to Amsterdam and bring some cash to him, $25,000. Simon Levayev was born Shimon Yehuda Hayut in Israel in 1990, where his family lived humbly. But it's clear that Shimon desired more and wasn't willing to earn it honestly. This was the total opposite of how he wanted to present his life in social media. At the age of 15, he told two family friends, Avi and Shavi Coben, that there were problems at home. So he convinced the Cobins to let him stay in their apartment in Brooklyn, New York for six months. A few years later in 2008, while they were on vacation, they allowed him to stay there again, where he allegedly helped himself to Avi's credit card. He didn't hold back buying himself a first-class round-trip ticket between New York and Tel Aviv, hotel suites, and even renting a Rolls-Royce. Around this time, he also reportedly engaged in his first Tinder swindler-style scam. Courtney Simmons Miller from Cambridge said she met Shimon while living in Cyprus when the two worked at a shopping mall together. He convinced Courtney that he was a secret millionaire about to receive his inheritance and asked her to become his personal assistant. Shimon then provided Courtney with stolen credit card information to spend in her name, getting the two arrested. Shimon fled back to Israel, leaving Courtney to spend two years in jail before she was acquitted. In 2010, he apparently took flying lessons, but he was also busy with more scams, stealing checks from a couple he babysat for in Tel Aviv. The couple went to the police, who issued an arrest warrant, but Shimon left the country under a false identity. This is when the famous scams began the extent of his crimes. After fleeing Israel to Europe, Shimon began operating under different names and scamming the women he dated. Over the next few years, he started to use Tinder to meet victims, defrauding them of around $150,000. However, after Finnish women reported him, he was arrested there in 2015, and the following year, sentenced to three years in prison. If you think that taught him a lesson, think again. In 2017, he was extradited to Israel, where he faced charges related to the checks he'd stolen while babysitting. So he changed his name to Simon Leviev, taking the same last name as diamond mogul Lev Leviev. His father is this diamond tycoon. Over the next few months, he would move between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem before returning to Europe to prey on more women. Why would Simon do this to me? This was a friend who I really cared about. The documentary picks up from here. Never hear him so cold in my life. It was like that person on the phone was no longer my boyfriend. He began meeting and defrauding women all over Europe, including Cecilia Filhoy and Pernilla Huholm. It's estimated that between 2017 and 2019, he conned his many victims out of a collective $10 million. I had eight, nine creditors, you know. It's a lot of emails coming down on you at the same time. As we find out through the film, an investigation by Norwegian newspaper Verdensgang led to his case gaining much more notoriety, resulting in an arrest by Interpol in 2019. What happened to his accomplices? While we know what happened to Simon Leviev after being arrested in Greece, it was one of the best moments of my life. What remains a mystery is the fate of his accomplices. Throughout the various stories told by victims, Familiar faces continued to appear. So what became of them? If it wasn't real, then did he lie to me as well? Perhaps the most prominent was Leviev's bodyguard, Peter, who also seemed to enjoy the outlandish expenses funded by the Tinder swindler's victims. 
He played an important role in convincing people that Simon was genuinely in danger, as his victims were sent pictures of him bloody and bruised after an alleged attack. He just says that they were going after me, thank God for Peter, if not, I would have been dead. While he was never charged for any crimes connected to Simon scams, Peter has lawyered up and is suing Netflix. He claims he was never aware of the cons, and his reputation has been soiled due to the alleged association. Aileen, one of the victims from the documentary, later claimed on a podcast that she overheard him raising payment concerns with Leviev. On the same podcast, a security expert claimed that Peter, like other bodyguards, could have been easily duped as they lacked the resources for proper background checks. In the documentary, another notable, albeit less prominent accomplice was Simon's business partner, Aviche. The extent of his complicity in Simon's scams is unknown, but a British doctor came forward after the documentary aired, saying that she dated him. As in Simon's scam, they met on Tinder, where she experienced crazy nights out with him and his entourage, including Simon Leviev. At one point, she claims that Simon began giving her a lot more attention once he clocked a Louis Vuitton case she owned. However, when Simon cut a holiday short with an alleged security concern, the doctor bought her own ticket home instead of flying to the crew's next destination. The relationship fizzled out from there. Was Aviche trying his own version of the scam, or was he simply attempting to start a relationship while traveling with Simon? We can't know for sure. Lastly, Another figure who's gotten a lot of attention is the apparent mother of Simon Leviev's child. She was present during Cecilia Philhoy's first encounters with the tender swindler, and played a role in convincing Cecilia he was a good person. It turns out, she testified against Leviev in 2015, when he was sentenced to his first stint in prison. While some may have judged her as an accomplice in his scam, others have speculated that she may have been in a vulnerable position herself. What happened to Simon Leviev? The media storm that followed the Verdon's Gong report in 2019 severely hindered Simon Leviev's ability to scam unsuspecting women. So he was hiding in Prague and he had absolutely nowhere else to go besides me. He always told me, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. These events eventually led to his arrest. Back in Israel, he finally had to face those old charges he'd been dodging for so long. Convicted of theft, fraud, and forgery, he was sentenced to 15 months in prison. For many, that sentence seems unsatisfyingly short, given the damage he left in his wake. But the story's ending gets even worse. It turns out that because of the coronavirus pandemic, Simon was released after just five months. Needless to say, he hasn't compensated any of his victims for their losses either. This is the real deal. The Bentley or the Ferrari. In an almost Wolf of Wall Street-like move, after his release, Simon created a website where he offered business advice for a fee. He also started various social media accounts and even rejoined Tinder. However, following the release of the Netflix documentary in 2022, Tinder's parent company Match Group Inc. finally banned him from all of their dating apps. His Instagram account was also flooded with comments holding him accountable for his actions. He's hopped from various social media platforms trying to retain a following. Look at me, I am so pretty, love me, want me! Still, he has never been able to stay on one for long before getting reported, expelled, or deleting them himself. As of writing, he's even on Cameo, selling personalized short videos of him. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. But no publicity is bad publicity, as it appears that he plans to use his notoriety to further his career in new directions. It's been suggested that he's already partnered with various people in the entertainment industry to produce a dating show, write a book, and host a podcast discussing the do's and don'ts of dating. In addition, some reports have claimed that a film is being developed around his story, although there are debates about whether or not he'd be involved. If all that doesn't surprise you, Simon Leviev has even mulled over a future career in politics, claiming he would make a good foreign minister for his home country of Israel. Regardless of this newfound optimism from the Tinder swindler, it's not likely anyone is going to forget his past anytime soon. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.